So now what I will do is I'll show you how we can use route parameters to be able to dynamically pass data to the server in the route. And this can actually make it so that we can receive dynamic data based on whatever the value of that parameter is. So I'll give you an example. Right now, we are only able to receive all of the users. Let's just pretend that this users array comes from a database. We are receiving all of the users in an array. But what if I wanted to actually receive only one user based on some unique identifier, such as the username or the ID? How would I do that? Well, this is where route parameters come into play. You can use route parameters to pass in a dynamic value in the route path, and then the server would receive that request. It would check what the route parameter is. And then since we know that we're going to be dealing with users because we would be visiting slash API slash users, and then the route parameter would be placed after that, we would go ahead and grab the correct user from our database. In this case, we're going to grab it from our array. So the way that you define a route parameter is like this. So right underneath, uh, my API slash users route. I'll go ahead and set up another one. But this time we will be using a route parameter. So I'll call app.get and then slash API slash users and then slash. And then here's where I want to define my route parameter. What I can do is I can use the colon symbol and then give my route parameter a name. I'm going to go ahead and give the name ID. And then we're going to pass in a request handler. So the same thing that we've been doing so far. And now whenever I visit slash API slash users and then slash and then the ID, whatever I pass in, it's going to go ahead and hit this endpoint. So I have one endpoint or one route defined to give me all the users. And then I have another route that has a route parameter that gives me a single user record based on the route parameter ID. Let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to show you first how I can grab that route parameter. And we do that by referencing it from the request object. So I can go ahead and console log this right now. If I reference request dot params, this is an object that gives you all of the route parameters because you can have multiple. You don't need to only necessarily have one. You might have more than one. You might have an ID. Maybe you might have a username. But typically in our in this situation, we, we really only need one. So what I'll do is I'll console log this and I'll go back to my browser and I'll show you what happens when I visit slash API slash users and then slash one. And then let me show you the console. You can see that right over here, the console logged an object and that object contained that route parameter as a field ID and then it mapped to this value of one. So hopefully that makes sense. So I can, and again, like I said, I can pass in literally any value I want. I can pass in 500. And then whenever the server receives that request, it will log uh, this object ID as a field of 500. So what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and grab the user from the array by its ID. So let me just first take this array and I'm going to move it up top over here. So that way I can reference it all throughout my code. Const uh, mock users. And I'll assign it to this array. And then let me just send back that mock users array. And then what I'll do is a couple things. One, notice how if you looked at the logs, the value of ID is actually a string. But in our case, our users have a numeric ID. So we want to convert that into an actual number. So, and this is kind of like a brief little intro to how you can perform validation for your incoming get requests okay so what i'll do is i will create a variable called parsed id and i'm going to use the parse int method and i'm just simply going to pass in request dot params dot id but here's the other problem though we don't know if uh the user even provided an id at all well if they didn't then it would go to the API slash user route. Like for example, if I didn't pass in an ID, it would just go to slash API slash users. So in because this is the case, we don't really need to check if ID is defined because we know that it's going to be there. But we do need to make sure that the value is valid. 
in our case, we want to make sure it's a valid numeric value. So what I can do is I can parse this uh, params.id value. And if it is a valid numeric string, then it'll convert it over to the actual integer itself. If it's some regular non-numeric string, then it will be not a number. So if I were to console log parsed ID, and then if I go to the browser and if I refresh, and I just pass in some invalid numeric or some non-numeric ID in the console, it will log not a number, NAN, which stands for not a number, for the parsed ID value. So we can use uh, an if condition, and we can use this is not a number function. And then I can just pass in parsed ID. Okay, and in this case, since we're passing in an invalid ID, is NAN would return true. So if it is not a number, then what I want to do is I want to return perhaps a status code that indicates that this is an invalid response or this is an invalid request. So what I'll do is I will return response and I'm going to go ahead and call the status method and I'll pass in for the code the number 400 which means bad request and then I'll just simply call send and then maybe an error message bad request. Okay and I can even add additional additional notes, invalid ID. All right, so now if it is in fact a valid number, then we can perform some operations. We can interact with our mock users array. So I'm gonna go ahead and now write the logic to find the user. So const user or find user equals mock users. And I'll just simply use the find method and I'll pass my predicate. So we're gonna search based on the ID so we're going to pass in this callback function, our predicate function, and we're going to have access to the user object that is currently in the array. And we're, we'll check to see if user.id matches. So triple equals parsed. Oh, whoops, did I? Oh, you know, I forgot this is actually parsed ID. Sorry about this. It's parsed ID, not parse ID. So parsed ID. Okay. And now... Uh, if the user does exist, well, let's do if the user does not exist, then I'll just return response. So we're going to do the same thing that we did above on line 29 right over here. So this is the point where you have different paths that your controllers or that your request handlers can take. So in our case, we have three different outputs. And later on, around the end of this tutorial, you'll learn how to unit test these these are uh, these functions but you can see right over here that currently i have three different outputs whether the id that i passed was invalid so it sends back a 400 or if the user is not found then we want to send back a 404 because that indicates not found so i'll return response.status and pass in 404 or you know there's also the uh i think there's a send status method so that way i can just send the status and I don't have to send, I don't have to call dot send again at the end. Um, and then if the user is found, then we'll just return response dot send find user just like this. So we have three different possibilities for this endpoint. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now let's go ahead back into our app. If I refresh, you can see it says bad request, invalid ID. If I pass in let's say an ID of a user that does not exist, it says not found. And you can see on the console, it gives us that 404. If I pass in an ID of one, it finds the user and I can see it right over here. And same thing, if I pass in two and three, I get all of the users that are in that array. So hopefully that shows you how to use route parameters.